This is how a few can actually control the mass. Because you can't do it with tanks in the streets and soldiers at the door. There's too many people. It's like trying to physically herd sheep together. You can't do it. You'd need a, a man, maybe more than one, for every sheep to do it physically. You have to do it through the mind. Either through fear or through conditioning people to think the way you want them to think. It's one of the things that um, I think uh, opens up so much to what's really going on in the world is when we realize that the same force controls apparently different organizations. So this um, giving our mind away, giving our power away, has actually created the vehicle for the few to control the world. And that vehicle is overwhelmingly what I call hassle-free zones, call them comfort zones as well. Every dogma, economic dogma, political dogma, crikey, because they're all night. Each of those dogmas and societies in general are all hassle-free zones. By that I mean there is a very narrow area of acceptable thought and behavior, the norm, which, if you conform to it, you're left alone. You're hassle-free. No one calls you mad. No one calls you dangerous. No one gives you a hard time for the crime of being different, if you conform. If you start to think, well, actually, you know, I've got a mind of my own, and it's a unique mind, and therefore, I'm going to have my unique truth and my unique view of me and life and everything. You start to get very dangerously close to the edge of the hassle-free zone. And eventually, if you keep going, you step outside of it. At that point, he's mad, he is. She's, what strange she is. He's dangerous, he is. Oh. And most people don't want that hassle. They don't want to be treated like that. So most people, even if they put their toe out there, go, oh, my goodness. I'm staying in here, it's flipping hassle out there. So what happens? The mass comes up. You know, you go down any rush hour in any city in the world, London, New York, Sydney, anywhere, and you see all those hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people coming past in the street. They're not projecting to the world what they really are, what they really feel, what they really want to do with their lives. They've got a mask. And it's a mask that says, this is not really me, but this is what I think is acceptable to everyone else so I can occupy the hassle-free zone. And for, for me anyway, it's that war in the psyche between that part of us that I call I am me, I am free, that wants to flow with our uniqueness. The war between that and the part of our psyche I call, oh my God, which is at the heart of emotional, mental, and therefore physical dis-ease in the world. And what it's also created is a mass schizophrenia. Because not only are we slaves to impose thought and behavior as a human race, we're also the police force of all the other slaves. In other words, what will the other slaves to impose thought and behavior think about me escaping from it? We police each other. It's like having um, a cell full of prisoners and one of the prisoners finds a means of escape. It's all the other prisoners that run to block the exit. We are both the slaves, the prisoners to this imposition and the police force of it because everyone seems to be trying to tell everyone else what is right and wrong, what is moral and immoral, what's right for them, what they should do, what they must do, what they ought to do. And as a result of that, we're actually manipulating each other without realizing it. And within this hassle-free zone, tremendous manipulation and indoctrination goes on. This hassle-free zone you could describe as the public arena. And if you look at the media, what is the media? The media is the collective police force of the hassle-free zone for anyone who steps out of it in public. People think, you know, when you say, the media is controlled and the media is part of this manipulation, that you must therefore be saying that there is a manipulator in every newsroom all over the world standing behind journalists saying, no, no, can't write that, you change that, this is what I'm telling you, you write that, okay, that's fine. You don't need all that. Once the structure, the mindset is there, then the media just 
does it without manipulation. But in general, what does the media do? It defends and uses as its point of reference from which it judges everyone and everything the norm in society. In other words, what the hassle-free zone says is reality. And there are, there are several key mind manipulation techniques which are very, very powerful propaganda tools. The most effective and the most powerful, and it's used on us all the time, is something I call problem reaction solution. It's a mind manipulation technique that avoids not only opposition to what is the goal of the manipulators, it actually manipulates people to demand they do what they want to do anyway. And it's happening all the time. I, once you see this technique and how it works, you watch the news and read the newspapers in a completely different light because you start to see it happening. It works like this. You start by secretly creating a problem in the world and making sure someone else is blamed for it in the public arena, in the public mind. It could be a run on a currency, it could be a government collapse. The problem's created secretly. You then use the media, which isn't difficult, to wind up public opinion in relation to your manufactured problem to the point where public opinion utters the classic words, something must be done, this can't go on, which is always, always followed by, give my power away, what are they gonna do about it? And at that point, those who've created the problem and got someone else to be blamed for it, wound up that public reaction, then openly in the public arena, in the parliaments of the world, uh, on the, in the newspapers and on the television, offer the solutions to the problems they have created. And in doing so, they get vast numbers of people to demand what they want to do anyway. If you want more cameras in the streets, crikey, they're going up all over the place in Britain. If you want more cameras in the streets, you want a more armed police force, you want more authoritarian laws, greater erosions of freedom, and you want the public to demand you do it, then get the public frightened of crime. Either let um, society break down so there is more crime, or emphasize crime to be worse than it really is in some areas, get people frightened, and the first thing people do when they're in fear about something is they look for someone out there to protect them from what they're frightened of. So, get people frightened that they're going to be burgled, and they'll demand you take the freedoms away. They'll demand cameras in the streets and more authoritarian laws. The goal of this manipulation, and has been for a very long time, is to get the world population to see as a good idea or the only option in given circumstances, circumstances that are manipulated into place, the creation of a one world government to which nation states would be principalities, administrative units, a world central bank which would administer all financial transactions on the planet, a world currency which wouldn't be coins and notes, it would be merely electronic, cashless society for which there are fundamental implications for freedom, a world army under centralized control with nation state uh, armies uh, dismantled under the justification of seeking peace, and a microchipped population linked to a global computer, the latter of which sounds bizarre to many people on first hearing, except that we are ridiculously close to it and the technology already exists. The way that this can be done with a very few people, at the peak that is, is because if you look at every organization today, a university, a school, a government, a secret society, anything, a multinational company, business of any kind, they're structured as a pyramid. The pyramid is the structure of society today. I believe that we're actually moving in this spiritual awakening that's going on now from the pyramid to the circle, which is a very, very different way of people contributing to society. But at the moment, we have the hierarchy, the pyramid, which works like this. In any organization, uh, you've got a very, very few people at the peak of the pyramid. That very few people know exactly what that organization's about, what its real agenda is, what it's really trying to achieve. The further you come down from that peak in any organization, you're meeting more and more and more people who know less and less and less and less about what the organization's really about. They only know their part. Keeping from everyone else in the pyramid how what they're doing in apparent innocence links in with what other people are doing in apparent innocence to produce a very sinister pattern. So every one of these institutions that 
control the direction of the world and our daily lives is a pyramid. The banking system is a pyramid. You go into the local bank, the person you meet across the counter won't even know what's going on in the bank manager's office behind them, let alone what's going on at board level and, and higher. So the banking system is a pyramid going to a peak. So is the global media and so on. And there is a global pyramid within which all these work, in which the peaks of all these individual pyramids, banking, uh, business, media, etc., fuse into one peak. And up there, it's speculated by many people, there perhaps may be no more than 13 families, 13 people at the peak, pervading down through these different levels, the same basic policy, which is pushing the world towards more and more centralization of power. Politicians walk the world stage as if they are the final arbiters of power in the world. So when a president speaks, the cameras run and it's flashed around the world, prime ministers and such like. The media report the world as if presidents and prime ministers are the final arbiters and decision makers in the world. Which means that the people above the level of presidents and prime ministers that really make the decisions, they're never looked at or exposed by the mainstream media because they're not accepted to exist. And yet, who decides who becomes president of the United States or even runs for president? Those who control the money, cuckoo land it is to run for president, and those who control the media. Same people control both. Though they decide not only who uh, runs for the Republicans, they decide who runs for the Democrats as well. And so it is around the world.